Recently, Verizon had to use tiny red balls to try to make you think they had a much better network than Sprint. But there's one big thing they left out. The new Sprint LTE Plus network delivers faster download speeds than Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. While Verizon seems to be focused on tiny balls, Sprint has been obsessively focused on building the network of the future. And to celebrate, Sprint is cutting their rates in half. Switch to Sprint and save 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile rates. You get the new Sprint LTE Plus network with faster download speeds than Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. And we'll even cover your cost to switch up to $650 per line, only from Sprint. Better for less. Claim based on Sprint's analysis of average LTE download speeds using Nielsen NMP data. Speeds may vary. Offer coverage not available everywhere. Excludes taxes, surcharges, add-on, and premium content. Subject to new line port activation fee and credit. See website for eligible plans. Savings through 1818 after pay full amount. Restrictions apply. Buy up your reward card after online registration and phone turn-in. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Saturday Symposium with Dan Wilson. But before we begin, of course, a few wise words from our best friend red skelton take it away Ray. i remember a teacher that i had now i only i went i went through the seventh grade i went to the seventh grade and i left home when i was 10 years old because i was hungry and i used to <laughs> this is, this is true. i work in the summer and i go to school in the winter but i had this one teacher he was the principal of the harrison school in vincennes indiana to me this was the greatest teacher a real sage of, of my time anyhow he had such wisdom and we were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day. And he walked over, this little old teacher, Mr. Laswell was his name. Mr. Laswell, and he says, uh, <clears throat> He says, I've been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester. And it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, May I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word. I, me, an individual, a committee of one, pledge, dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity, allegiance, my love and my devotion to the flag, our standard, O oh glory, a symbol of freedom. Wherever she waves, there's respect, because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United. That means that we have all come together. States. Individual communities that have united into 48 great states. 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose. All divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose. And that's love for country. And to the Republic. Republic. A state in which sovereign power is invested in representatives chosen by the people to govern. And government is the people. And it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people, for which it stands. One nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided, with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life, without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation. And justice, the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others. For all. For all. Which means, boys and girls, it's as much your country as it is mine. And now, boys and girls, let me hear you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country, 
and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance, under God. Wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that is a prayer and that would be eliminated from schools too? That was recorded in January of 69. And unfortunately, how accurate he was for too many, you know, schools have taken it out. And our country has migrated towards socialism more than anything else. As the far left wants to accommodate everyone when... Back in the days of Teddy Roosevelt, he said that, yes, we welcome immigrants from all over with arms opened as long as they are willing to accept the way we are as people, as Americans. Now, we've gone over 400 years now since we've been on this continent. And we've formed our own heritage, our own beliefs, and our own traditions. Yet the far left wants to eliminate all that. They want to erase it. They want to take our form of immigration. And they want to rip it, tear it apart. Because prior to uh, the progressive movement taking over, People had to be vetted before they could come into our country. And they had to show what our country, what they could offer our country. And they had to show a willingness to learn our language, to learn our history, before they were allowed to come into this country. And now it's like, open the borders, let anybody come in, whoever you want to, you know, bring your drugs, bring your uh, weapons of destruction, bring your terrorists in, and there's nothing that is stopping that. And then our president is saying, well, we'll just make them uh, citizens of the United States while they are violating every rule that we had prior that made sense. Because we were, we were a country. Today we're a more of a boarding house than anything else. And it is the goal of the conservatives to bring us back to being a country. And today, um, Gary, you had asked about uh, doing a show on the uh, Supreme Court, and I figured today would be a good day because I think we've all been uh, caucused out. <laughs> it's past exactly week, right. Though. I think we got overdosed. <laughs> <laughs> Until the actual voting process, I think we can uh, sidestep that. So we'll talk, we may talk about it uh, a little later, but we'll talk about the Supreme Court. And we'll also talk about what's going on in, uh, in Iowa, uh, where, you know, the, or is it Oklahoma? No, Iowa. <laughs> Where is it? Wait a minute. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. where, uh, where they're having that uh, uh, standoff with the uh, militias. Oregon? Because it, uh, do they, in Oregon? Uh, in Oregon, sorry. Uh, where they're having the uh, standoff with the uh, militia. And we'll discuss that a little bit, too, because... There are some misunderstandings on state sovereignty 
and the rights of the militias. But first of all, let's uh, start out with the Supreme Court. And this is a group uh, that is totally overstepped their bounds, boundaries for years. You know, 67 Roe versus Wade, which is, uh, you know, oh, patch 67 was, you know, close to 50 years ago. And um, they have been voting and adding riders to our amendment. They have been voting on things outside of the amendments. Now, if we look at the Articles of Convention, the Supreme Court was created to rule on the amendments only and the Articles of Convention. And that was it. They had no right to place riders on our amendments or to make any changes whatsoever to any part of our Constitution. They only were to pass rulings on a case-by-case basis. And instead, the Supreme Court has... figured they were so supreme they could add federal laws and whatever. And this is way overstepping their bounds, boundaries within the law of the Constitution. And in the South, they are breaking the Constitution. Now, what's going on over in Oregon we have a land grab situation going on. When the United States uh, Bureau of Land Management is purchasing properties in excess of 10 10 square miles, which is the limit, and they are creating and turning them into wildlife sanctuaries, and taking away the jobs of people who once worked on these properties, specifically in the, uh, in the Hammond Ranch that had cattle. And the federal government took away the water rights that had been created by the original settlers to water their cattle. And then they come in, and though the Hammonds did not originally want the militias in, the fact is uh, the federal government broke the law by taking over uh, state land. And they have no right under the 10th Amendment to do so. That has to get approval from the state government and county government before they can do any such thing. And this is what government overreach does. They are slowly but surely trying to take control over each and every divisional, each and every state, so that we have fewer and fewer rights. In Texas, they're trying to take over the uh, the waterways. You know, in Florida, they're trying to take over the Everglades, and I'm sure there's a list a mile long in every state where they're trying to take over parts of the states so they have more control over us as a people. Now, the federal, the way our our government was formed is that the power was supposed to be 
distributed among, amongst the uh, the three branches of government and the states, where the states were going to act as a mediator so that no one part of the government could control the entire country. And the Supreme Court was starting point A for the uh, federal takeover of our country. And now people don't recognize state boundaries. Um, they, The federal government is telling us by the day what to, more and more of what to do, how to live, what we can have, what we can't have, and it has gone totally out of control, which is why, as conservatives, we want to return things the way they're supposed to be. And it's going to be a long, hard process, but uh, this is where we're standing right now. And with that, uh, after my opening comments, I'll pass it over to Glenn, and Glenn can pass it over to Gary. Well, you're exactly right, uh, Dan. And hello, Dan and Gary, and hello, America. Hello, Glenn. You know, <clears throat> it's... Um, it's amazing, you know, the over overstepping that this government is doing on all on every issue and every possible thing, even from within our families, um, schools and, and, and churches, everything and land, like everything that's supposed to be for the state or supposed to be um <clears throat> you know, given our choice because, you know, God gives us our, our, our freedom of speech or forgive our a freedom of a free will and um and God's will, you know, He doesn't push anything on us, and yet this government is pushing everything to to better their agenda, um, which is evil. It, it really is not of God at all. <clears throat> and you know, and you you mentioned about, <clears throat> excuse me, about the Supreme Court and um, how important people. You have to understand how important the Supreme Court is, um, and it's not being looked at enough. And with that being said. I read, and I don't believe everything I read, but at the same time, is I do have to check it out. And, and I don't know if you have, Dan or Gary or anybody else, but I seen a statement that was made, um, apparently made by um, Hillary Clinton, that um, should she uh, you know, be uh, the president, she is going to appoint Barack Obama to the Supreme Court. Did any of you guys hear that? Yeah, I heard, I heard that. that. Yeah, I don't know if there's truth to that or not, but you don't know. I mean, I don't put anything past these leftists. Nothing. Exactly. Past. And we know what would happen if Barack Obama was any part of the Supreme Court, because we already know the leverage he has right now with them. So can you imagine him being going from president to being on on the Supreme Court? I mean, you mentioned last week, Gary, I believe it was that we, you know, we we need a we need a two or three more, you know right wing in there. We don't need a Barack Obama on that. No, that would be dangerous. Really dangerous. It would be mm -hmm. awful. <clears throat> and um, so therefore, people, you have to understand there's just another level there of why we need a all true and blue conservative government come this November. Because if we don't, every level, you know, forget about Congress. Forget about even, even right now we, we have the Senate and we have the House. And it's a lame duck Congress right now, as far as I'm concerned, just like the lame duck administration. So if you can imagine, if you can really look into this, people, if you can really look into what the government's been doing the last seven years, has been more in the last two years, <clears throat> um, really turned up the heat. <clears throat> but more, it's a, it was a gradual heat, and all of a sudden they just, they just turned it to overdrive. And if you can only imagine, folks, if you're tapped into the reality of what's going on right now, if you can imagine what comes January twentieth, two thousand seventeen, I guarantee in the in the next the, the first three months of any any liberal getting in there again, in the first three months you're gonna see you're gonna see something going to way back before the, the depression of, of decades and decades. You're gonna see something worse than this country's ever seen before by about ten times at least that, maybe even a hundred times that. 
not just to what it is now, what it was even in the Depression. It's going to get even worse than then. We're talking pre-Hitler days. We're talking like even – it's going to be so teary. I mean, oh, my God. Even even Walmarts are talking about closing. Um, like it's going to be about 10,000 Americans losing jobs. And they're saying it's because their sales are down. It's not. You know what, folks? Their sales are not down. I'm telling you right now, their sales are up. And if not, if not doing well. Here's the reason I believe why they're can't why they're actually going to close them down for FEMA camps because you know that Walmart is the number one business in this country when it comes to make um, job providing and whatever else have you. They are the ones. If you look at beneath, beneath the surface of what they've done with people, you know, child labor, you know, everything. You wouldn't believe this. This what the Walmart's done. And it's, their their hands are both in the the government's pockets, so don't be fooled by thinking they're going to shut these down because they're losing money. They're gaining money at everybody else's expense. The corporates like them, the, those people, those are the ones that are gaining from everybody else's you know demise, and therefore they're. I believe they're getting them set up for FEMA camps. So you see, this is all. There's just so many holes in this boat that if we don't we don't get them plugged real soon, it's going to be to the point where you only have so much you can plug, and after a while, there's it's, it's all one hole, and we're sunk. And this is what I believe is happening. Supreme Court is incredibly important, more than most people even give it an understanding to, because like Dan mentioned earlier, of what their key job is to do, and what Gary mentioned also about how many, how much leverage they have right now. If it is true what Hillary's planning on doing and appointing Barack Obama, there is no one worse than Barack Obama to appoint to the Supreme Court right now. We've seen him as being a president. Can you imagine him uh, beneath the surface working with the Supreme Court? It's gonna, they're going to take everything over, and this is what's going on. So you know, I'm glad you brought this up a couple weeks ago, Gary, to have this as a um, conversation because um, Hillary um, just proved you right because if that's what she's saying is going to happen – then I'm glad we're talking about it now, and I believe it's God that's bringing this up because you didn't know this, and nobody, she never said anything about appointing Barack Obama to the to the Supreme Court until after you made that conversation with Dan and I and, and wanting to do this show. And then, boom, a week later, here she goes. She wants to appoint him. So I believe it's, it's, it's God, and so therefore we must react and, and, and get this um, – to everybody, so everybody knows what's going on to make it more important of understanding how this November is is the most important election you're, you're, you'll ever, ever face. Because without this one, anyone after that, it's too late. And I think everybody that understands even half of what's going on now, even only half of what's going on, because you know what? When it comes to the government, we don't know everything that's going on. Not everything. We can't know everything that's going on. All we know is what we see is terrible. So what lies beneath all those individual issues have to be worse than what we even know. So in order to get this back on track, this November is the most important election. I, I, I mean, and I'm, I mean, I've, I've been here for almost ten years, and I, I knew a little bit about you know, government in Canada and whatever have you, but being, being caught up in this. Um, tyranny myself that I've been going through with them and whatever else is going on it it it's it's I know it's God he's pushed me into um being a bigger part of coming here to America than I even knew I knew I was coming here to America um to do some good things with God but boy oh boy I had no idea I'd be tapped into this political realm as much as I am and you know what um I don't mind because you know I don't even mind what I went through to a point of pleasing God, not pleasing man, but pleasing God. Because if I'm doing something that's what God wants me here to do, and I'm, and I'm going to get to vote this coming November, you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to try and do the best I can to get other people to vote, even if I don't vote, because I didn't the last time, I couldn't the last time. And I got hundreds and hundreds of people to, to vote the last time. And this time, I got it into overdrive. I'm going to make it even more, because it is the most important election. With so many issues that are are holes in this boat, we need to plug up, and we need to plug it up real soon. Because once that water goes above our our, our nose, we're drowned, and this is what we're seeing now. So, you know, Gary, your issue of of this Supreme Court is is so important, and and you know, I can't emphasize this enough to to folks that with this Hillary comment, that just threw it over the top for me. If that should pass, if that should come to pass, we cannot let it come to pass. That's that's the that's the thing. If there's talk about that 
and she's leaking that out, <laughs> it's going to be worse than what she's what she's even saying. So on that note, I'll hand it over to Gary and, and get your comments about that. Well, that's very well said, uh, Glenn, and you also made some great points there too, Dan. Uh, yes, the Supreme Court needs to be addressed. And the reason I'm saying that is because if the liberals don't get their way legislatively, they're going to have the Supreme Court, if they get one more justice, we're at a razor-thin major- majority right now, we have a 5-4. It goes the other way to 4-5, uh, they're going to get their legislation through by the court. Well, just like I said, Dan was mentioning Roe versus Wade. Uh, I don't see that anywhere in the Constitution, you know. And I joke, you know, I said uh, people would come up with a like, separation of church and state, and I said, well, maybe you'll find it there by the uh, by the abortion clause in the First Amendment, <laughs> you know, because it's not there. You can turn it upside down, you can squint your eyes any way you want. It's not there, you know. But, I, you know, they put it in, they legislate that way, they come up with amendments that aren't there. They just make them up. And that's, that's the worst form of corruption, and it's very dangerous to a civil society. It's very dangerous to our republic. Because this is a form, a dict- it's actually an obligarity, is what it is. You've got five of them ruling, making their decisions for us. You know, it's not even a monarchy. Monarchy is one. But we've got five people making those decisions. It's the ultimate form of power. Even more powerful than the presidency, really, when you look at it. Because when they, when they make that final decision, it's cemented in stone. We can't change it. This is why I'm pushing for Article 5, because I think it's time now, maybe the... Uh, legislators should be able to override some of these decisions, maybe by a, a three-fifth majority. I think that would be a good idea, because that's the way it won't be cemented in stone. When these people, uh, are, excuse me, when they're so arrogant that they think somehow they have all the power in the world, if we knock their power down just a little bit and say, well, we can override these decisions, they maybe won't be so cocky about it, so arrogant about it, you know. And uh, we have four well, we have a couple of good ones on there. You got uh, Clarence Thomas and Anthony Scalia. I mean, they're they're doing pretty much the right things, you know. But we got the other ones. Or we got a couple on there, like uh, John Roberts. He he'll occasionally do a, make a right decision, and occasionally make a bad decision, you know. Like with this health care thing, he was the one that. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for him. Health this health care would have gone down the the tubes. But he decided to vote for it. Decided it was a tax. But it wasn't really a tax. It was a penalty, you know. And, uh, yes, that's what we need to focus on, especially because you get somebody like Hillary, and I don't think she'll probably make it, but you've still got Bernie Sanders, who is an admitted socialist, and I can talk about that, too. Uh, he would definitely put the, the far leftists in there, and they'll be just as dangerous as Brock if Brock got in, you know. They're not going to be for the people. You know, they're going to be for growing government, which is very dangerous. And, of course... If we were talking about Bernie Sanders being a socialist, uh, you know, 20, maybe 30 years ago, anybody that would run and call themselves a socialist uh, would never have a chance to winning. But nowadays, it seems like socialism is an uh, end thing. That's a, that's, uh, that just goes to the failure of our public schools, see? They, they, at one time, and I know Dan will agree with me, at one time, the schools actually taught conservatism. You know, most of them did, you know. And now they're teaching that socialism is the only way. Well, I, I tell you what, what what country in the world, were, can you, anybody name me a country in the world where socialism works? I can't. Never. 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 You're exactly right. And uh, like I said, this is why I want to focus on this, because all the media outlets, most of them are not, uh, talking about uh, the Supreme Court and the danger it, it poses for our country. The president, yes, is, uh, excuse me. The president is very important to vote. I said it's very important to vote for these, but also our our Supreme Court is what we got to keep our eyes on. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Dan. Well, uh, you were speaking about uh, socialism, and one of my favorite quotes is from Margaret Thatcher, and she goes, "The only thing wrong with socialism." is eventually you run out of other people's money. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be said any better. And we look at the Supreme Court, and we want to see what their actual, and I'm reading right out of the Constitution, under Article 3, Section 2, and it says the judicial power 
extend to all cases in law and equity arising under the Constitution, the laws of the United States, and the treaties made or which shall be made under the authority, to all cases affecting ambassadors and public ministries and councils, to all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction, to uh, controversies to uh, which the United States shall be a party to uh, controversy between two or more states. In other words, the Supreme Court is to solve problems between, in the Constitution, the states, and international affairs. They have no right to create laws within our own country or to make amendments to uh, amendments to amendments. The only way that can be done is through filing a new bill and introducing a new amendment that has to be passed by two thirds of the uh, majority of the people. So, in other words, the machine guns and uh, riders that they put on the Second Amendment are not legal. And the, the Supreme Court is overstepping their boundaries. Why? Because Congress is allowing them to. Mm-hmm. Because it is Congress who has the control to say, uh-uh, uh-uh, you can't do this. And what we need is a conservative Congress who's going to take away the power of the Supreme Court and limit it to exactly the way it is written under Article 2, Section 2. And if we get, you know, this is what our Constitution was created for, is to resolve such problems that we're facing today. And the problem is, is we have gone into an establishment government that goes under a status quo where nobody's willing to stand up to anybody else. Um, You look at our lame Congress today, and saying it was a lame duck is the understatement. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a lame goose. <laughs> lame goose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With, his, yeah. with his legs stickers up in the air. <laughs> yeah. be done. Uh, I mean, it's uh, our Congress has been totally ineffective for eight years under Speaker Boehner, who was an absolute joke, and he wonders why the conservatives turned against him. And now Ryan's in, so we went yep. from the from the fire to the, to the from the pot to the fire. I mean, yep. I, I, he is just as bad, if not worse, than Boehner. And what was it? How was the how were they voted in? By the establishment Congress. And the only way we're going to change things is by ridding our nation of the establishment. And that's on both sides, because it is the establishment Democrats and the establishment Congress that are leading our nation down the road to destruction. And the eventual outcome is going to be tyranny, where the people have no rights, where the people do not have a voice as how the children are to be raised or what they're going to be doing for a job. And... If we don't change it now, people, and we get Obama in the Supreme Court, 
who we know has no, doesn't care a thing about our Constitution. Because he's overstepped the Constitution more times than I overstepped puddles. I mean, he just he doesn't he just does as he pleases. He bypasses Congress when he whenever whenever he wishes. He has bypassed Congress more times than Carter has liver pills. <clears throat> he has broken laws so many times that he is only second to Hillary. And if we allow Hillary into office, God, God, help uh, rest our souls, because we're going to turn around, and we are not even going to recognize the country where we live in today. And it's up to us. It's up to every one of us. And this is including every one of you out in our listening audience that. The only way we can stop this is through the voice of the people. Now, we are getting it going into the primaries, which usually are not well represented. And what we need you to do is get out there and vote. Vote for the best candidate you can. And if we all get together, I think we'll come up with the best one. We have, I mean, for the first time in my lifetime, have I seen so many qualified candidates. I mean, you have Carly Fiorina, who knows high tech by the back of her hand. She also knows big management. She knows foreign affairs. And then we got Ben Carson. Again, Ben Carson took a regular med school and turned it into the top of the country. He has made decisions, life and death decisions, on a regular basis. He is used to being awakened at 2 o'clock in the morning and being effective immediately. You got Ted Cruz, who is very knowledgeable in the Constitution, and who is a fighter. And then you got Donald Trump, who nobody stands up to. I mean, you got some wonderful, wonderful candidates. And, I mean, even if I were elected, if I won the primaries, I'd throw Christie in as Attorney General, I'd throw, um, um, I'd bring um, uh, Carly in uh, as, um, no, what's the the chief of, uh, uh, she does all the coordinating for the president. And I'd bring in um, Carson as in charge of um, oh, the Surgeon General. I'd have uh, you know Trump or Carson on uh, as president and vice president, depending on who wins. And I would bring Rubio in on foreign affairs. I mean, you could utilize all these candidates in specific positions where they could thrive. Mm-hmm. And we could come in and show that, listen, here, we got the, we got the perfect cabinet. And then we bring back all the, all the joint chiefs. And, and all the great generals that were fired under the Obama administration and reinstate them and bring them in as a joint chiefs so we get our military back in one piece. Yeah, I would even I throw mean, Alan West. I would bring in all of our um, uh, 
best generals who were forced to resign under the Obama administration because they refused to say yes, yes, yes. You know, the true soldiers who will know how to solve the problems over in the Middle East and will know how to get things going. I mean, we have a uh, the Joint Chiefs obviously make all the military decisions. And we also have to change. I'd have them all read the book Boyd and say, you're going to go under his doctrine because uh, Boyd shows how you can have a very powerful military at a reduced cost, at a, at a reasonable cost. And instead of spending $1.5 trillion on a single jet, which is ridiculous, the F-35 Joint Strike uh, Fighter, that is nothing but a uh, lobbyist who has talked some generals into and admirals into a money pit. But anyway, you know, we we... We have such a good choice for president. And now all we need is for people to get out there and vote. So we can have the best of the best who can go up against whoever is on the going to be on the left, which I have a funny feeling is going to be Biden, actually. Uh, I think what they're going to do is they're going to wait until Hillary's almost all the way there and then they're going to let the axe fall on her, and then they're going to replace Biden with uh, uh, over Hillary. And then if he's going to walk in, and then they have a good chance of winning. So we got to we got a lot to do ahead of us, and we need a great debater who is going to bring the people over from both sides and right now I say it's Donald Trump it's either Trump or Cruz those are the two people and right now Cruz we know is not liked by Congress because he tells it as it is he doesn't and the the, uh, you know the lamestream uh, Congress you know, is ticked off at them because they don't like hearing the truth. I mean, and the same thing with the Senate. That's why he's not liked. You know, people don't like to go against uh, the status quo. And when somebody does, they automatically go on the on the rampage. And we have to, you know, stand up for these people and we also need to start bringing the branches of government back to where they belong. If we want to reduce the size of the federal government, we got to return the power back to the states and take Amen. it away from the government. And with that, I'll pass it over to you, Glenn. Well, you're exactly right, and and that's that's the that's the biggest problem is is. There's just so much power, <clears throat> you know. I mean, Red Skelton said it best, you know. It's from the people to the leaders, not the leaders to the people. And, you know, it, the Constitution, you know, points out the state's capacity of what they do and the federal. And the federal, you know, they're just a, they're just a minuscule. <clears throat> they're supposed to be just, excuse me, <clears throat> pardon me. They're supposed to be just, a, uh, you know, a, a little, a little bit, you know. And, and now they've tipped the scales. They've got more control and and that that it, it just blows my mind that the people did not see you know um what was going on with this, and then you get the Congress in there and they and they've just been sitting around pretty much giving him what he wants in you know, Obama, and you know they get elected in so we have power of of the purse you know for the Senate and the house and it's it's no different it's actually it, it's actually worse. Than even when it was, you know, liberals were on on the one side or both sides. Because the reason why it's worse is because 
when you have expectations that your Congress is going to do what a, what a conservative Congress is supposed to do, and then you get basically a Louisville slugger over the head with, with them doing nothing, that's actually doing worse by doing nothing or just handing them over whatever he wants. And and that takes away that takes away all the power that the state has, each state has for themselves, also at the same time. So when you when you when you get these these people that are getting that get voted in and then they go against everything that they said they were going to do when they get in there, well, we, we have a we have that's why we have people that don't come out and vote anymore. They give up. And we and we and we need to encourage them to say, you know what? Before you just vote, vet the person or people. I mean, we're talking, uh, we're talking presidential election here, but we're also talking the Supreme Court. We're also talking um, your your local elections, everything, because those are the people that that grow in that process to become. Um, you know, they go through the chain. They don't just come out of nowhere like Obama, and then all of a sudden they're in the Senate for a little bit, didn't do nothing, pretty much in there for for a breakfast, and then all of a sudden they're the president. That doesn't usually work that way. <clears throat> you know, usually there's there. You know, you have some some experience. You have different things in there. You know, like a Trump does in the background. Even though he wasn't political, he has he has experience. Or, or or you know, Ted Cruz is a senator, but you know, he worked up through the different things too. You know, Obama's supposed to be a a constitutional expert. Well, if he knows the Constitution and, and he's a constitutional scholar and the teaches it and whatever have you, and he's went against everything. That's the reason why he became a scholar, so he could know it inside and out, so he could go against it. He was fooling everybody, and he was planted to do that. So we got to watch what we do when we see these people out there. we got to know who they are, not just go by because uh, old Fred and Bert over there, they said, yeah, these good guys, so let's vote them. No, we got to individually, because we got to individually vet these people, no matter what level they're on in government, whether it's your local, you know, you know, even your school elections. Every every election is important because it affects you as an individual from every way, from the grassroots, from the from the from whatever you are locally to the federal, state, in between everything. Because everyone's supposed to do the job they were in, they were voted to do uh, uh, by the Constitution, not just go out there and make their own rules and do whatever they want, and then all of a sudden it's gotten out of hand where people just give up and then. They let them do it, and they they hand over everything to them, and then the people don't vote. So then you got like four things going on at the same time that are negative, and it gets out of hand. But you know what? We can take this back because we are the people. We do have control. The reason why we have control is we have the control by our knowledge of vetting them and then voting the right people in, and things can change real quick, real quick. But we have to do it as an individual, <clears throat> and that's, that's the problem we're seeing right now is that too many people are just kind of like – Giving up, and then and then then those are the ones that are cr- crying and whining in, in in their cereal because they haven't got the result that they 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 desired. Well, if you have any, if you have real passion and real desire, then you'll then you'll do the vetting to get to the end result, and that is your your desire will be met because then you know you're being protected first and foremost from the federal government from any outside in, uh, stuff that's coming in or people that are here now will be thrown out you know and that's exactly what needs to happen we don't need any more we have enough people that were that are that are here that are american and their parents are american born and their parents are american born and maybe three generations down the road they come from ireland or wherever else we have enough people that are criminals here right now that are in the jails we don't need to welcome anybody else that we know because or, or we or we don't know because we haven't vetted them properly to come in here and if we get people that we're voting in because we haven't vetted them probably, that's what's going to happen. That's what's happened. It's we, they, we never vetted them, and they're not vetting the people coming in here, and therefore we're the ones that are at risk with our, our life and our jobs and everything else, our liberties and our freedoms. It all ties together, folks. Everything does. Unfortunately, most people don't see that because they don't want to see that. Their head's buried in the sand, and it only gets pulled out every time they want to complain. And I'm sorry, but that doesn't work that way. You know, it does not work that way. That's why that that's that's what how you become a socialist or a communist country is when you just allow everything to happen and sit there and complain about it. Or even if you don't complain about it, then you wonder why 
you don't get um, uh, you don't you don't have a job, or when you have a job, you don't get paid uh, paid very well, or or or, or you know fruits and vegetables and, and whatever you eat, everything, gas, everything, whatever it could be, is so expensive. It's all because we we as an individual did not do what we're supposed to do. Because you know what, freedom and liberty is everybody's responsibility, not just not just every, and not just this person, that person. Because you know, if you don't do it, and 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 you keep and everybody keeps saying, well, I'm not going to do it. Somebody else will do it. Then nobody get nobody will do it. And that's the that's the power and control that the government takes it because they go, ha ha, we got you. And that's the problem is everybody's disconnected. We need to be connected and unified together. And as individual, we have more power and control over the government as we unify each other than than we do as in just saying this next person will do it. That's the lazy man's out. And then we wonder why all these immigrants are coming over here illegally and allowed to come over here illegally. And and, and people are saying, oh, they're stealing our jobs. Well, no. We gave it to them, folks. That's the problem here. We did, nobody stole nothing. Even the government never stole nothing from us. They can't take something we don't give them. We, we are the ones that allow them the power by not doing our own individual job, and therefore there's the freedoms and liberties that we've just lost because we didn't if – you know, if you don't take a chance you know, then, 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 uh, on anything, it's gone. The chance is gone. That chance, that opportunity is gone. And if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And on that note, I'll hand it over to Gary. Well, very well said. Uh, you know, you know the the process, you know, voting and stuff. I I was on my Facebook page, and as I had some of my friends. You know, they they were saying, uh, "Oh, if Trump gets in, I'm not going to vote." You know, I'm not going to vote. I'm going to leave it blank. And I said, then you might as well vote for a Democrat because that's how Democrats get elected. They depend on that. You ever notice when we go to the primaries, the Democrats support the weakest Republicans for that purpose so they can get in power. They always vote for the Republican that is weakest. And then, of course, in the general election, they'll vote for the Democrat. That's how it works every time. And we have to vote. This is what scares me the most because... You're not going to get perfection out of any candidate. Everyone has their flaws, but if they get nominated, I'm going to vote for the, the you know, I'm going to vote for the Republican candidate. I don't have to support everything they say, you know, but I'm going to vote for them because I, we can't afford a person like Hillary or, or Bernie Sanders or, you know, anybody else on the Democrat side because what's going to happen? They're going to be far worse than. Even Jeb Bush, you know, Jeb Bush was quite liberal too, but he's anybody would be better. But it looks like it's going to be Donald Trump or or, or Ted Cruz, and uh, I, either one I'm going to vote for. And they both have their weaknesses, and they both have their great points, you know. And uh, I think uh, Donald Trump would be a, a great president. And we also need a great Congress, a strong Congress too. You know, just it's always kind of like a backup. A Congress is if if you ever have a president gets out of control or does something that's really outrageous, Congress can put a stop to it. That's what they should have done with uh, Obama, and that they could, they they could have really easily, but they were too scared. They're going to be called racists or hate mongers. You know, they're scared of being called names. But the person's just going to have to rise above that. You know, and of course we have a Supreme Court right, right back there. You get a Hillary in there. Or Joe Biden, or whoever it is, they're not going to put a conservative on there. They're going to make sure they're going to do a litmus test and make sure that they're going to vote our gun rights away. They're going to say, "Well, it's not an individual right; it's a collective right, like the like the military stuff, like that." That's how they're going to redefine it. You know, the First Amendment will not be an individual right. It'll be for the press, of course, the left-wing press. And they'll do everything they can to take conservative talk radio off the air and say, well, they're hate mongers. Uh, we got to get them off the air, you know, because they're, they're, they're the reason that uh, all this violence is going on. I know they're going to go after talk radio for that reason. I just know the left too well. And uh, anyway, I'm going to switch in ears here. But anyway, uh, yeah, and we also need to, I'm going to reiterate this, we need to bring God back. Because if we don't have God in our lives, I mean, then our country will be will be seeing chaos in the generation. Well, we've seen it now, but it's going to get far worse than it is now. It is actually good compared to what it probably would be if we keep going down the road we're going, you know. But uh, on that note, I'll turn it back over to Dan. So, well said, Gary, and 
I agree. We are seeing God slowly but surely coming back into our lives, and it's nice to see because it is through him being placed back where he belongs, where he can help us with rest and solve these problems. Um, We look at what's going on with the judicial system who is trying to take over the country. Uh, The Supreme Court has way overstepped its boundaries, again, in order to add more power to the federal government. The states are not requiring that they have the right So we need every state to get involved, too. And we need a a conservative Congress, and we need it uh, on both sides. We need it on the Democratic as well as the Republican side. Because right now, the uh, elitists on both sides have taken it to extremes. I mean, now we are on the edge of the socialist abyss where one more step and we aren't coming back. And I don't want to see that happen. As you said, Gary, earlier, that we, Gary and I remember the early days growing up in Mm -hmm. the U.S., and it was an entirely different place. Yes, it was. You know, I mean, God was the center of our lives. We had uh, the Pledge of Allegiance every day before school. You were allowed to, you know, you could have valuable classes after school or whatever. I mean, there was a bunch of little programs. We had trade. In high school, you could either go towards college or you could go for the trades. So you could take shop and woodworking and uh, classes that would teach you skills that when you went out of high school, you could go to work in the trades. All that's eliminated. Most of the sports are eliminated. They don't know, children no longer know how to work together. So when they go to, when they go into the workforce, they are totally unprepared. And these are all intentional people. Because what it does is that if these children go out into the work work workforce and are unprepared, they are not going to be able to get jobs and then they will become reliant on the government. And this is a prison that was started in 1964 under President Lyndon Baines Johnson. And when he created the welfare system, he created a prison. It was originally to imprison the blacks and the poor. And he, after several generations, people don't know how to get out, even though the door is right in front of them. But they have been so in tuned and so ingrained and so brainwashed that they believe they have no other option other than crime and living off the government. And this is the problem we're facing today. And what we conservatives want to do is show them that you do not need the government to control you. And to feed you, you can go out and make a living 
and live in a much higher quality of life than you are at this present time. The big thing we also need to do is we need to encourage our legislators, and this is why when we go into the voting booths, that we need to start at the ground level, right in your own home community. So you can build up a state government who is willing to say to the federal government, no, we're standing on our own. And if every state says that, then the federal government loses its power. And this is what we need to do. So when you see the local elections down the road for school board and town council, don't write it off as nothing. This is where you meet your politicians, and this way you get to know who they are and what they stand for so you can make the best choice. And then when they go on to the state legislator, legislation in the state house and the, in the state senate, you know who you're voting for. And you can vote the conservatives in. And then out of that, you'll get a conservative governor. And then we can declare our independence and our state sovereignty. And if we want to downsize what we hear so many conservatives saying, we want to downsize our government, we want to downsize our government, the only way that can be done is by vesting the powers back to the states and to keep God as the center of our country. Because as long as God is there, he can protect us from Satan. And it removes the power. The first things that a uh, socialist republic does is to remove God and then remove your firearms. And by doing the two, then you lose everything. By losing God, you really, you lose the, more, the morality of the country. And it gives the federal government more reason to take control over the people. And that, in turn will give them the opportunity to take away our weapons and our freedom of speech and our freedom of assembly, our freedom of religion, and the first three amend and the first two amendments are history as well as the tenth. And this is what happens when people do not get involved. We are, everybody says we're a democracy. We aren't. We are a republic. And a republic is where the power is vested in the people to choose their leaders. And the only way a Republican can work is if everybody gets involved. And it boils right down to that. And it starts at your doorstep and your town hall. Because what we need to do is change the, state, the ideals of the state so that they will to take back power from the government and vest it in the so each sovereign state so we can make our own decisions. 
and not let, allow the federal government to make the decisions for us. And that is a big thing, because without doing that, how do you think we're going to be able to reduce the size of the federal government? And the first thing we need to do is take the power away from them, and then we can dismantle them. And from there, I'll take it over and pass it over to Glenn. Well, you're exactly right, both of you. You know, we 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 have to take this control back as it's meant to be, because <clears throat> it's just falling through our fingers. You know, it it's just like a slime. It just it's just, and that's exactly what this administration is—a slime. You know, <clears throat> it's um, it's 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 gut check time, folks. It's now. It's now. Because November is going to be here before we know it, and we got a lot of a lot of changes to to to, ha- to start happening this year, and it has to start right now with going to your your um your your your, your communities, you know, uh, bringing people together, you know, it, 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 people say, oh, it it seems like too much so much work. Well, you know what, folks, because of the lack of work, this is why we got the mess we have. People keep sweeping things under the carpet and I've used this analogy many times before I haven't recently but you know if if someone if there's a mess and people are just sweeping it under the carpet you know the first thing goes under the carpet you don't notice it but you know after a while when people keep sweeping things under the same carpet it becomes a a a thing where you know you're walking by and all of a sudden it's 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 like a mountain it's like a like a like a you know it gets to be three or four or six inches next thing you know you're flipping over it because it's so much of a mess, you know, you flip over it. Well, if if we don't clean these messes up soon, we already are falling over them. The thing is, when you when when a person falls, depends on how hard they fall, and we're falling really hard right now. People are starting to wake up to this, but we we still have to carry on the same message because we need more and more people to hear it. Because because um, if 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 we're if we're not going to clean up this mess, no one else will. <clears throat> It's going to become a, a dirtier mess, and and people are going to be tripping over it more and more. And guess what, folks? It's our children and our grandchildren that will do that, that will be tripping over everything because of our mess. You know, in the last 20 or 30 years or more, I'm just stating. You know, since Ronald Reagan seems to be a good, a good time frame since since he left office, things have progressively gotten worse. And I do not like the word progressive. It is the it is it just spells communism to me. Um, so basically, um, you know, if he, people got back to God as 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 we've been we've been saying, or, you know, this the, over the course of this show and over the case of course of most every show, if you get back with God and you ask, you say, okay, in every situation, what would Jesus do? There's only two ways to find that out: is to by praying. And fasting, that's one altogether, and getting into the Bible and reading that Bible and studying the Bible. Not just read the words, but studying it. The Holy Spirit will come through you and he will give you the answers. Jesus will give you the answers you need for everything. All the answers are in the Bible and they're in the prayer and fasting. If you have that as your, as, as your base point, you've got everything around. Because anyone knows in building anything, you have to build a relationship with Jesus first. And once you build the relationship with Jesus, like you're building, like a like a, a person in construction builds a house, you have to have a solid foundation before you can put the walls up. If you don't, the walls will fall. And that's exactly what's going on, or has went on, <clears throat> over the over the decades and decades. <clears throat> it's progressively gotten worse because Jesus is being omitted out of everything, or almost everything, and it's getting to that point where it's. If if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. And I, when I say that, I don't mean you can't be flexible in certain things. But when it comes to God, no, absolutely not. And when you when you have that core foundation base of God and Jesus, like Jesus in your life, then you'll make the, the the right decisions. And and yes, there can be some flexibility in other things, but not when it comes to your core values of Jesus Christ. If you if you do not have those solid that solid rock foundation everything else will will just wither away you will not it, nothing will stick nothing and so therefore if we don't get back to those values <coughs> pardon me then then we're going backwards 
but backwards in, in the wrong direction. It, it, it meaning we're we're going we're actually going the same as moving forward. We're actually going backwards way before you know back in the, in the days of, of of depression and whatever have you, and we're, we're going to lose everything. And God is among us, and he, and He's looking. He's looking for people to take take this country back, and we all have to be a part of that, or we'll be apart. We will not be together. We'll be apart. But we need to we need to take this this opportunity now, because I think we are on our last chance with God. I really do. I really believe this is it. If we don't take things back, it says right in the Bible. We all read it. We all study it. And and he, he he he's 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 a merciful God. And at the same time, we best get right as an individual because we don't know if he's coming tomorrow. We don't know if he's coming later today. All we know is we got to get right right now. Because if we don't, because there, there, we don't, we, there is no tomorrow. It says right in the Bible. Don't worry about tomorrow. Take care of today. And if you can't take care of today, you'll have that base foundation with Christ, and that'll take care of itself because you'll be in that that right habit formation with God, and you do the same thing every day. You know, folks, the definition of insanity is doing doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. If you don't like what's happening now, we got to change at least one thing in order to get a different result because it'll drive you insane if you don't. And that's why people are out there complaining about this, complaining about that. But speaking, speaking doesn't do it all. Your actions behind, okay, what what do I do to fix it? What can I do as a part to fix it? Not rationalizing it, just getting out there and being a part of it. That is that is the movement that that we need to do right now, and it only starts and it only ends with God, <clears throat> and that's it. And if we don't get back to that, we we've lost everything. Um, we are as an individual, and and if, yes, we are. We have to be right by God, and we do what we have to do, and that's fine. At the same time, as if we're just keeping it to ourselves, that's not what God put us here to do. God put us here, put us on this earth, to um to love and understand what Jesus has done for us and to emulate that, to do what he did. And that means share the word with other people. Don't force it on them. Share the word by your actions and your, your, your actual voice is a lot stronger in your actions than it is by just saying something because we, we've already seen what just words can do with the government. They speak and speak and speak and say they're going to do something and they don't. Well, that means because they haven't put the action, so therefore there's no trust. So how can you expect or how can anyone expect the next guy to believe you if you're not following up and and doing what you say you do? You know, you've got to have your actions there. And those will speak more than the words. And, and then you can speak because you're backing it up and people will follow you that way. It's 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 gut check time, folks. This is it. This is – we're basically on Monday. It's February 1st. We've got only a few short months before November comes around. So we got to we got to do this. We got to get everybody we can involved, and just like I said, don't force it on anybody. Just give them examples. Um, tie tie it to what's going on now to help people understand, and just say yes. It's it's not good what they're doing, but we all have to do a, uh, our part to to unify. And um, it's been done before. We, we, you know, we've went through similar things, not to this degree, but and and you're not us, maybe as an individual even, um, back years ago when um, there was problems like this with governments. But it's been done before. But the reason why, one of the biggest reasons why it's such a hard time to understand what they're doing, is because all the history, you know, Dan will tell you, all the history that that's in America has been rewritten. The governments have been rewriting this history and taking it um, out of the schools. So therefore, you don't, you can't have any reference to what happened 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years ago or more. You, you, they don't want you to know that because they don't want you to know how you can correct it. They just, want, they just want to keep giving you something that isn't the truth, and they want to keep giving you stuff that they say is free, but nothing is free because that's how we lose our freedoms because someone had to pay for it. And as Dan was mentioning about Margaret Thatcher, you know, about how she was saying about, you know, it's other people's money. Sooner or later, you're going to run out. 
So if, if you don't have the proper understanding of what happened in the history, you're doomed to repeat it. And this is what we're going through, and that's what they wanted to do. The one, one of the biggest things they did was take away the truth from the, from the real history books. And, and if you go back you know, 100 years, more than 100 years ago, you'll find the real history. And you'll find how, how it repeats itself if you don't know how to handle it and understand how you can prevent it or, or, or get back to how you can prevent it from happening again and, and, and not doing the same thing. You've got to have that understanding. And it's like anything. I was taught years and years ago, this is why I have such a, a very good memory, is in order to remember any one thing, it has to be attached to something else. And if, if you really understand that, you know, you'll understand that if, if something happens and all of a sudden it reminds you of something else, that's because any one thing, it, 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 you can't, it, can't be memor- it can't be memorable without having something else attached to it. So therefore, if you don't have anything to attach to history, the real history, there's nothing there to pass on or to even mem- to, to remember because it's not there. So therefore, they, they take that and they put something else in place of that that's false. And therefore, that's supposed to be what you remember, or, or you have a memory of of that false. You know, that's something that, that's something that's false. So this is the this is what we need to 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 understand is is no no history, even in our own individual lives. If we make a mistake, and we forget that mistake, we're going to do it again. We have you know we haven't taught ourselves, or haven't been taught by um, maybe even having some kind of a um, you know um, what do I say? Um, the penalty, you know, if we don't remember something and it, and it repeats again, there's a penalty for that to whatever degree. And it's no different without knowing history. There's a penalty, and that means we, we're doomed to fail again, and, and we, we, we lose, you know, it, it erodes. <clears throat> it just, we just lose everything because we're allowing them the power by us of our lack of knowledge of history and how we've gotten to where we are right now. So it's 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 of utmost importance to understand that that foundation of God and our history. Without that, we're we're lost, totally, totally lost. And on that note, I hand it over to Gary. Well, very well said. I I couldn't improve on that, but I'll I'll have to add. You know, you're you know we're talking about God and religion and following it and stuff. And we learn by our mistakes. We also learn by our sins. And that's that's you know because we're all sinners. But I, I have known people when I went to college that uh, actually would distort the God's meaning. In fact, I had one person that claimed he was a, a pastor, you know, but he wasn't. But he was out there, he was cheating on his wife. And he said, well, you know, I know God will forgive me for it, but he continued to do it. That doesn't make it, you know. But you hear that kind of stuff, you know, somehow they say, well, God will forgive me for it. Oh, he forgives you for his sins, but he doesn't mean that as, as it can be used as an excuse to continue on with that sin. And uh, I was told by another pastor, that's way off, you know, you, know you, you, you commit a sin, you learn by it, and you improve, and so you don't commit the sin again. And then, of course, we're repentful for doing it. But, you know, uh, that's the thing. I see that a lot with the left in this country, too. You know, I've had discussions with uh, liberal celebrities, and they'll sit there and they come up with their own ideas. They don't read the Bible, but they come up with their own ideas what moral is. Like uh, I had one tell me, well, if you own a gun, that's immoral. That's a sin if you own a gun because they're weapons of war. They're not weapons of war. I'm not using mine as weapons of war. Mine are safely stored in my gun cabinet. I use mine for sporting purposes. Yes, I go out and shoot, but I'm not shooting anybody, you know. But that's how they distort the meaning, you know. They distort it. And I see that all too much, too. This is what we have to rise above, too, and, and try to educate people, not force it. Like Glenn said, we don't want to force it on anybody, but try to educate people on the truth because I believe, I do believe in the long run, the truth is going to win. I always believe that. Good always triumphs over evil every time. Well, we might have a few setbacks at time, from time to time, but good will always triumph over evil. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan. Dan? Did he lose Dan, Glenn? No, I'm have... here. Oh, Mr. Oh, okay. I'm here. Oh, oh that's you, uh... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, I was just trying to figure out um, 
uh, when we are talking about uh, what we're going to be losing. And we need to get, you know, the people involved. I'm going to say this is the number one thing. And if we don't get the people involved, then I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, uh, this election, God gave us a great selection of people. The Democratic Party has virtually nothing on their side. They got a socialist crook or just a plain old 90-year-old socialist. And that's their choices right now. I mean, so there's nothing really there. If we don't win this election, and if people will take a look at what happened four years ago, when we said, oh, uh, because Herman Cain dropped out, uh, I'm not going to vote. Uh, I'm not going to vote if Romney uh, doesn't win. I mean, if uh, uh, New Gingrich doesn't win. And what happened? We give Obama another four years. And over the last three years, he has done more damage than he did the previous four years. And do you think it's going to get any better if we allow this to happen again? People, whoever wins, even Bush, He is going to be 300% better than Hillary or Sanders. So you go out there, you do your constitutional duty, and you vote. This is this this is a very unique obligation that we have in this country. It sets us aside from the majority of the countries because we get to choose who are going to lead us. Not many countries have that. And what we're doing is we're throwing it all away. Why? Because we're too damn lazy to do a little work. How hard is it to go down to a town hall meeting? You know, you get out of work, you go over there, you listen for a little while, you get, you sit around with coffee and donuts afterwards and talk to them and get to know these people. And then you can vote. And there's your vetting process. And once you get that original stance, you have to put less time in because you already have taken the initial effort. Because you already know who's going to be going into this the uh, state legis- legislator legislation. Because you went down there and you listened. And then when it, com- when it comes down, all you don't got to do is... Go a couple times a year, get to know these people, take a look at their voting records, and then you you can make a you can make an informed decision. And then when it comes down to sending somebody to Washington, you already know we have a pretty good idea of who's going to be running. And the newcomers, you look at them, and you sit down there and go, what kind of management experience do they have? How long have they been in in industry or business or whatever they're in? And do they know how it really is to be a manager? And do they know how it is to work? And then you can make decisions from there. You know, people have a lot of bad things to say about Trump, but fact is, 
he took, I mean, his father wasn't poor, but he took that money and multiplied it by tenfold. And why? Because he's a darn good businessman. And you can't take that away from him. And by being a, a good businessman, which Carly Fiorina also has, you have a person who knows how to negotiate, knows how to deal with a large staff. They know how to deal in foreign affairs. So they have to deal with it within their own companies. You got Dr. Ben Carson. A person doesn't become the best neurosurgeon in the country, and it's going to be an idiot. You know, the guy has a lot. He's a smart cookie. And what's the one thing about very intelligent people? They can learn and get themselves up to speed very fast. And yes, he has the management skills as well. So we have some darn good people running for office. And we have some darn good people that are going to turn around and could be great in creating the center of the, of the cabinet. I mean, literally, we are looking right now, sitting before us, an entire cabinet and president. And all we have to do is decide who's going to be the president. And they can take these intelligent people had a few from the outside, like Art Laffer, the creative, uh, the creator of uh, Reaganomics, and you bring a few other people in, and then you start cleaning up the mess. You know, you turn around to the SEC and tell them to start charging people with any trust suit. Go after Microsoft. Go after the cable companies. Go after anybody who has over 25% of the market. So that we can have a free enterprise system where every company is on an even playing field. When you have a group of monopolies running, you don't have that. So what you need to do is break down the monopolies and allow the competition to come in. And we need to stop this baloney going on. And by breaking these monopolies down, you are going to also reduce the number of lobbyists who are paying off our politicians. I mean, it's going to take some work but we need with good conservatives who are statesmen and not politicians who are there for the best of the country, not what's the best for their wallets. And then we can make those changes. And since it's up to us to do that. And we can't turn around to somebody else and say, it's somebody else's problem. No, we are a republic. And again, I mean, I've said this twice already, but a republic is where the power is vested in the people. And if you are not willing to take up that position and take it seriously, then a republic cannot survive. Because it's up to each and every one of us. And yeah, there's 350 million people living in this country, and it may sound like a lot, 
But when you break it down to the state level, it's a lot smaller. And if we do what we're supposed to do, and the way our Constitution was created, where the states are making the majority of the decisions, not the federal government, then we have more power vested in ourselves. And then we can make the changes necessary because we're doing it on the state level. I mean, everybody knows you can meet a state legislator a lot easier than you can meet a federal one. That's just sheer common sense. And that's why our federal government was, and our Constitution was written the way it was. So we can have direct access to those we have elected into power. And we can turn around and say, I can take your job as easy as I can give it to you. And then they're going to listen. And then you have the ability to do what's best for your state. And Texas understands that very much because at one time they were their own country. And we need to use Texas as a model, but Texas needs to also make the same decisions that I I just brought out. They need to take control of their own state first and then work as a model for the rest of the country to work off of. And then we can start making the changes. Because the more states that empower themselves, then we can start shrinking the federal government. And then we can take the power away from the Supreme Court and take the power away from the executive branch. Because they no longer will have the authority to rule over the us. And that will guarantee and that will assure us our constitutional rights spelled out in the amendments. And no one will be able to take our guns away. No one will be able to tell us what we can and can't say. Well, people, all this is happening to us right now. They're trying to take our firearms away. They're turning around telling us what we can and can't say. They're telling us what we can and can't do when it comes to our religious beliefs. They've taken God out of the equation. Why? Because we allowed it. And it's time that we stood up as Americans and fought for what we did, what is ours. And you turn around and you, I mean, if you just take a walk back 50, 60 years ago, God was the center of our country and there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We could turn around and walk down the street with a Bible. We could sit down and walk into a church or even sit at a park bench and read our Bible. We can take our Bibles to school. We can have Bible classes after school. And there was no no issues about it. We were taught true history. Kids today do not even know who our founding fathers are. Ask them who our 16th president is. They don't know who Abraham Lincoln is, and they don't even know what he did. They don't know who George Washington is, or Thomas Jefferson, or or James Madison, or John Adams, or 
Samuel Adams or uh, Benjamin Franklin. They don't know who these people are. And they don't understand the sacrifices that were made when the sign of the Declaration of Independence put that their own names on that piece of paper. They don't know how over 50% of them lost everything. How not almost no family in our early country did not lose someone to the revolution. They don't understand uh, in the Civil War that we lost 25% of our country when fought when brother fought against brother. How can you make decisions on our future when you don't know our past? You don't know the sacrifices made. And you don't understand that we were put here by God and that the Constitution of the United States was inspired by Jesus Christ. Because if you look at the ten, if you know anything about the Bible, and you place it next to our Constitution, you are going to find a lot of correlations. You're going to see how our Ten Commandments and our Bill of Rights, how they coincide, how they work together. You see, we are created under a Judeo-Christian foundation, which means even as we created our Constitution, we created it with the Bible sitting right next to it. And why do you think all of our oldest buildings surrounding the mall all have carved in granite God? Why do you think our currency says in God we trust? When our children don't even know who God is. Because our parents are too lazy to take them to church. The schools are too afraid to even mention him. What happens when the child goes in school wearing an NRA t-shirt and is thrown out of school. Talk about losing our way, people. We have to make these changes. Because we are totally lost until we put God back in our in the equation as a center. And then place our Constitution right next to it. And then start following that Constitution along with its amendments. And putting placing power back in the states where the people have the control, then we are destined for doom. And yes, we got a heck of a lot of work ahead of us. But... I just spelled out pretty much everything we need to do. With that, I'll pass it over to Glenn. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there, there, Dan. You know, you I couldn't have said it any better. Yeah, the st- uh, the things that the government are trying to take away, the all the all the all of it. The, it's just unbelievable. You know, when they start messing with um, the Second Amendment rights. Um, <laughs> All the other amendments, the first, everything is gone because we have we 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 can't stand up for ourselves with anything. You know, it, it, it's like you know a robber. You know, if they go to rob a home and say they know that on the left side that house, those people in there have got a gun or two or ten 
or the one that's on the right side of them, they don't have nothing. Does any any one fool think that the robber is going to go in to the house that has all the guns first, or even have that have that even in his mind that oh yeah that's no problem? He's not going to try and go up against someone that has something that that you know have, have any kind of uh, force that could be against him. No, and it's the same with the government folks. If they if they take everything from us, guess where we have to go to get it back to them, and that's the power they have over us, and that's exactly what they're trying to do and have been doing. So if you if there's a robber out there that goes to a home that that you know that has no, nothing, no guns or whatever, they can take whatever else is there and not have anything to worry about because they don't have any force or any power against them. But we the people have the force and the power. Um, uh, because we are the from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people, and therefore any anything we have um, that's that's to be gone with the Second Amendment, everything will be gone, because that's why Obama and the administration and and other ones, not just him, are, are trying to take that away from us because that is our constitutional right, and when they start taking away all these constitutional rights, and the Second Amendment is a doozy then what happens is is we've lost everything because they have everything. It's, it's, it's so easy, folks. It's so easy to understand that, that anyone, I mean, comes into your house and they take something. Are you? Do you really want to allow that? Is, is anyone just walks in and takes takes something and they walk out with it? No, you wouldn't like that. So why give it to them? Why give it to them? Why hand it over? Because that's what you were, that's what you'd be doing. It's your right to have what's in your house yours. It's yours. It's your it's your right with this constitution to have your freedom of speech, freedom of of your of your religion. God gave us free will. There's a consequence for everything. But God will give us the consequences. Government's not supposed to give us consequences. It's not supposed to take things from us. They're not supposed to force things on us. God doesn't even do all that doesn't do anything to that. He says, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. But are you here for me? And so therefore, it's it's like it's like John F. Kennedy said, and I don't know if I can get it totally right, but ask not what you can do for your country. Ask, 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 ask what you can do, what, what you can do for your country, not what your country can do for you. God is, God, okay, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And we don't start asking what would Jesus do in any situation then 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 we're then we're lost we we don't appreciate that we don't we don't have any foundation and therefore it's like the government if we if we allow them to to have their own foundation and do whatever they do they're the ones that have the strong walls and everything like that like they do in the white house right now they're the ones that are in control they're taking everything from us whereas god has says you know what i'm the only one God says, not me, Glenn, but God says him. He's the only one that can, that can that can that can take from you. Don't allow others. He's the one that says, "I'll give you free will, and I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you um, your 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 um free, you know, God, my will. You can do my will. You can do free will." That's why we're supposed to ask, "What would Jesus do?" Then then we're gonna make better decisions. We're gonna have have a better chance at doing the right thing. But if we if we allow the government to take from us and 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 whatever, then we've given them our our free will. We've given them everything. And therefore we can't blame the government folks because we have allowed it. Maybe maybe you didn't yourself, but we as people have. So therefore because you know our kids it's not their fault cuz they didn't do this. And their kids didn't do this, but there comes a time where we can't keep blaming everybody else. We got to take a hold of it and, and say, okay, you know what? Maybe I didn't create this myself, but what can I do to make sure that my kids don't have the same mess that I was handed to, handed handed to, whatever? Or their kids? It's got to stop, or else it continues, and it's gone. Because God God's given us a chance, an opportunity here to stand for Him, and if not. We're falling for everything else, and therefore, when we're falling, 
it's like falling into the pit. It just keeps going and going, and we don't need that. We got we got the pit right here, and that's the that's the thing is we need to take the control back, and it's easy to do it as, as if individuals c- come together. You can't do it by yourself, but you can you can actually promote this by getting involved in everything that you do. But the question always has to be first: What would Jesus do? And we will get this. We will we will do this. Because like Dan was saying, you know, it's it's a republic that we're losing here. It's not a dem it's not a democracy, it's a republic. And that, and it was here first. And if people want you to believe it's a de- it's a, it's a democracy and it's not. There's there's you know, there's democracy in some things were, but not, not this is our, our, our Judeo Christian values were on built from that from a republic. And and we're losing that republic. To communism, to socialism, to tyranny, to all of these, 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 these um, grab. They're grabbing everything from us. I mean, it's that simple. That what they're doing is they when they take when they keep taking and you allow them to take it from you, when you have nothing left, where you turn? Well, we turn to God, but we're supposed to be with God anyway. And then we wouldn't allow them to take it from us. <clears throat> and therefore, this is why the mess we have. On that note, I'll hand it over to Gary because we're getting close to the top of the hour again. <laughs> okay, well said there, Glenn, and and also Dan, very informative. Uh, and I want to go on. You know, we we're talking about our gun rights. Okay, what what else? When they take away your gun, what else are guns? I mean, they're, they're, it's not it's a right, but they're a private property too. And if they can get their foot in the door and say, "Well, guns are just too dangerous, so we just can't allow you to have," what's to stop them someday in the future from saying? I don't think you should be driving around that three-quarter ton pickup. It's just too dangerous, and you might end up hitting a Yugo, and, of course, the person in the Yugo probably won't survive. See, they'll try to make everything equal to the lowest common denominator. And, of course, down the road, what's to say, well, you know, your your house uh, is too big for you, and we think it's putting out too much pollution out there. What's to stop them from taking that away and maybe having you live in a 8 by 12 room, you know, I mean, that's, nothing can stop them. This is this is what another thing the Second Amendment protects. Actually, it's meant, of course, to, to protect yourself against tyranny from a from an out of control government. But it's also private property. You own those guns. The government doesn't own them. And I know they they kept saying, "Well, health care is a right." Well, I can I, okay. I'll say okay. I agree with you with health care. Okay, uh, you have a right to buy your health care just like I have a right to buy my guns. And if I I don't want I don't want Glenn to buy my guns. I don't want Dan to buy my guns. I earn my own money. If I can't afford one, I wait till I get enough money and then purchase it myself. It's the same thing with their health care. Unfortunately, of course, the government regulated it so much that the price is way out of way out of hand. But back in the 50s, health care, you didn't even need insurance. You could go into the doctor and pay, pay for it. Even surgery wasn't all that expensive. But it, when the government started getting involved, uh, the price started to skyrocket. This is the problem with government. And now with health care, when you have a right to health care, of course, they, 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 it's demanded on you. You've got to purchase your insurance. And down the road someday, I maybe I'm going to sound like an extremist here, but someday they may mandate that you have a certain surgery done. They may mandate it to, you know, to fulfill the requirements. What's to stop them? You know, what's to stop them down the road say, well, you know, uh, you know you've know, you lived long enough. Uh, we're going to give you a shot and make you all better, of course, euthanize someday that's going to happen i mean this is what this is this is communism uh i don't want to live in that type of world you know uh i love my freedom i love it too much i mean i enjoy coming and going as i please i go to work i enjoy my work i have good friends good staff members i work with and uh you know i enjoy that i can when i leave i go home i enjoy my time off you know that's what freedom's all about and of course, God gives us that freedom. That's the greatest gift God's ever given us is freedom. And you're right; people can misuse it. People can have the freedom to rob a bank. Of course, there's penalties under law, and it's immoral. But they they have the freedom to make bad choices. That's one of the things. With it. we're on this world, we're on this earth, just a speck of time. We're not on here very long, and we can make bad choices or good choices. I remember Tammy Locker saying, "You can be bad, or you can be good." That's one of the best statements she said. It's a very true statement. One of the best choices we have is is freedom, and I choose. Like I said, yeah, even though I make mistakes, 
you know, I choose freedom, and I try to do the best I can. I follow God's word to God's word to the best of my ability. You know, it doesn't mean I don't I don't screw up from time to time. We all have goofed. I mean, Dan said we goofed. I, I goofed. Glenn's goofed. We all have. We're human beings. Human oh, yeah. beings are not perfect, and we're never going to be perfect. We just do the best we can. We strive for perfection. There's nothing wrong with striving for it, but we're never going to. We're always going to fall short. And with that, I'll turn that over to Dan. I don't know how much time we have left, but I'll turn it over to Dan. So uh, we got uh, 12 minutes. So okay. I'll do a quickie, and then we'll do one uh, closing statement, and then we'll play sweet to baby James again, I guess. Um, the whole thing is, people, is that as a republic, it requires each and every one of us. And as Gary says, you know, our right to bear arms um we just passed in legislation uh legislation in this state for open carry. So now you'll be able to see my Colt forty five strapped to my side in my nice new holster that I have to go out and buy. <laughs> um <laughs> And you're going to see that any bad guy who wants to do anything, they got a good guy standing right behind who has a weapon that will stop him with one shot. And there's no arguing with a Colt 45. I mean, it's one of those guns that you shoot first and don't bother asking questions. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> its bite is bigger than its bark. <laughs> exactly, and uh, that's the way I wanted it. You know, a twenty-two, a person can in retaliate. A forty-five, they don't. They don't have that chance. And me being older, and you know, I don't want to argue. If I have to pull that trigger, there's a darn good reason behind it. Uh, And I will not pull that trigger unless absolutely necessary. Because I know once it's pulled, it's no turning back. So anyway, I have my Second Amendment right to protect myself and my family and my belongings. And I have First Amendment rights to speak my mind. And I value these rights because they weren't weren't given to us by man. They were given to us by God. And never forget that, people, that this is a Judeo-Christian nation founded by God and believers of God. And if we are to keep our traditions, our heritage, and our beliefs, we must never forget that. And with that, I'll pass it over to Glenn for his final words. Well, yes, I, I think this is um, a very fruitful, fruitful show with um, trying to get people back to the to the core values of of Jesus Christ and and our Constitution. <clears throat> you know, because they are so linked together, and or or I should say, they they should be linked together and. They've both fallen off, you know. We we we've lost uh, quite a bit of both here in America and in the world. You know, it's not just America, but we say America because you know I'm originally from Canada. America is where this is this is the base. This is this is like home base. You know, it really is. Um, if we're not going, then the world's not going. That's just the way it is. And you know, and I'm from Canada, and I can say that. So. Um, I'm not just, uh, if you were to say I'm American-born, biased, whatever, but this is it. Canada is beautiful. A lot of other countries are beautiful. And at the same time, this, you know, and, and of course, we need to protect Israel. And, and at the same time, though, is this is this is the, this is the core. This is where um, everything revolves around America. And if we don't get it right by God, and we don't get this Constitution back the way it's supposed to, supposed to be, then we're... we're um, you know we're we're in we're in dire straits here, folks. We we gotta get back to if we get back to God, 
the way we should be. It's moving that way. I'm seeing more and more in the last in the last year. It's just been incredible. You know, I'm 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 smiling because of that. But uh, but you know, but we got a lot more work to do. We've done a lot. We got a lot more work to do. And with and having that, we'll we'll realize and understand what the Constitution is because when you realize that that foundation, the solid foundation, is is, is Jesus and what what He stood for and what He still stands for. We have to stand for that also. And in knowing that, that's how you the, the Constitution comes alive. That's how you know that you're on the right footing, is if you have Jesus in the Constitution. And then, you, then once you realize that, you realize how bad it is, too, folks. You realize how bad, how, how much they've taken away um, Jesus out of, out of everything, uh, uh, most things, and the Constitution out of everything. And that's why we've, you know, it's been replaced with evil, tyranny. And once we realize the the base of of God and and the Constitution, we we'll realize just how bad it, it is. Bad it is, but we need to move on it quickly. So I want to thank all of our listeners for for um, for joining in um, on on this and whatnot. And um, you can feel free to call us up and, and voice your own thoughts and whatnot. Uh, the more encouragement we have for um, our listeners out there, the better. Um, and you know that way we can um, we can have unity because. United we stand, divided we fall. And on that note, I'll hand it over to Gary. Exactly right. I do want to thank our listeners, too, and also encourage them to call. And I've been up to Canada, too, a couple of times there, too, you know, up to the Peace Gardens and stuff. My my son was at the music camp up there back in, oh, this probably, oh, that was the year 2001. That was before that attack, you know, back in, oh, when was it, June, I think. Something like that, anyway. But I was up there, and it is a beautiful country, you know, taken well care of and stuff. And uh, But anyway, uh, what are we going to talk about? Yes, uh, yes, I, like I said, we all have to vote and get involved. And I'm going to say something, too. Uh, I got a hold of Morgan Brittany, and she wants to come on the show. So, And I think we're setting our sights on February 6th. Uh, she's, that's what she's pushing for. And I'm not going to say it's etched in stone yet, but we'll we'll see what happens. Or she's gone this weekend, but uh, she's trying to get. Uh, I believe uh, next weekend is February 6th. Try to get her on. And I, I know you guys. I know the audience will love to listen to her story because she has quite a bit to tell, and she's very conservative, very pro uh, Second Amendment. I've already talked to her before on the phone a few times, and yes, she's a she has guns. She goes out and does a lot of shooting too. And there's a lot of celebrities who are uh, who are conservatives. They just don't hear much about them because they usually don't have a job afterwards. That's the sad reality in Hollywood. Because if you're conservative, you're you're blackballed, which isn't which isn't right. But that's the way life is. But anyway, I'll I'll turn this over to Dan, and we'll let him uh, wrap up the show here. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank both of you. Uh and Glenn for joining me and to make this show better than it has been since I started it. And I like to what really makes it real special is for everybody who's listening in, whether you're in um, listening in archives or listening to a live. And please feel free to call in if you're listening live. And the uh, call-in number is 347-205-9620. And we'd love to hear from you if you have anything to add to our conversations. And uh, hopefully we've given you something to chew on for the next week. And think about it, and really think about what it means to be an American. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to a cow, a a folk singer who sings about a cowboy who lives on the range, and he's all by himself. And with that, let's give it over to Sweet Baby James. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you on Tuesday. There is a young cowboy He lives on the range His horse and his cattle Are his only companion He works in the saddle And he sleeps in the canyon 
Waiting for summer is fast just to change And as the moon rises He sits by his fire Thinking about women and glasses of beer And closing his eyes as the doggies retire He sings out a song which is soft but it's clear As if maybe someone could hear Good night, you moonlight ladies Rock of our sweet baby Jane Deep greens and blues are the colors I choose Won't you let me go down in my dreams And rock of our sweet Baby James Now the first of December Was covered with snow So was the turnpike From Stockbridge to Boston Though the Berkshires seemed dreamlike On account of that frosting With ten miles behind me And ten thousand more to go There's a song that they sing when they take to the highway A song that they sing when they take to the sea A song that they sing of their home in the sky Maybe you can believe it if it helps you to sleep But singing works just fine Rock up by sweet baby Jane Deep greens and blues are the colors I choose Won't you let me go down in my dreams And rock up by sweet baby Jane Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Yesterday, Cliff Sora shared a top 10 list of hot fusion restaurants, a vegan gluten-free mashup recipe, and a podcast featuring organic food trends. Oh, TMI, I, too much internet information. That's oversharing. Cliff, Geico has something worth sharing with your friends. Like how on geico.com you could save hundreds on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim. Gluten-free info that's easy to swallow. Mm. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.